Okay, so in this video, I will show you how to implement what we have just learned in R. And I will show you the same thing twice, first by hand, where we actually use the equations we have just discussed. And then the second time where we use R's built-in functions, which have these equations built in somewhere deep inside, but there you can't see the equations, we just type the right commands and get the answers. And I will show you, we actually get the same answers both ways. So we have started to understand a bit how do the built-in R functions work, because we can only produce one small bit of it. So let's see what we can do. So what I want to do is I want to use this mtcars data set, which I've already mentioned in the initial part of this section. And just if you want to know details of this, if you type help mtcars, there comes a help page, which has a reference where it's from and explains all the columns and so on. But here we are not interested in cars. We are just interested in linear regression. And so we just use this as a bunch of numbers we can try our methods on. Let me just check MT cars. That data set has 11 variables. That is what I want to use as a response. And these 10 are the ones which are our inputs. So let's first split these out. So the response is easy, MT cars, and we don't specify rows, which gives us all of them, and first column, which gives us a bunch of numbers. Down here, you see the values we have. It's 21, 21, 22.8. And if we scroll back here, you see 21, 21, 22.8 in the miles per gallon column, so that has worked. Then we need X. That's a bit more tricky because I want it as a matrix. And that thing here, it says is a data frame, which means it stores every column as a vector, but they're kind of only a bit loosely connected. And we need to convert this. And I believe the command to do that is data matrix. Let me just double check the help. I pressed F1 to get the help. Data matrix returns the matrix obtained by converting all the variables in the data frame to numeric modes and binding them together as the columns of a matrix. That's what we want. And we want that for columns 2 to 11. Let's do that. Then it says down here, X is of type numeric, which means it's a vector or matrix or otherwise a bunch of numbers. It has 32 rows that goes with the 32 inputs and it has 10 columns. That's because we cut off the response. But now what we need to do is we need to add our extra columns of one because remember the matrix X we considered, the design matrix had a one in the first column and then the inputs. And C bind is a command in R to bind columns together. So we do a column of ones and then all the other columns. Let's try that. Now X has 11 columns, no longer 10. And if I do head X, then we see the first column has no title because we didn't set one and it's full of ones. Head just says show the first few rows. And then we get cylinders and so on. So that is all what we need. Well, we solve the equation X transpose X times beta equals X transpose Y. And in the notes, I wrote X transpose X inverse to express the solution. But if you do that on a computer, that's not such a good idea because of rounding errors. If you can avoid computing an inverse, you should. And instead, we actually solve this system of equations. So let's try that. X transpose X, I just give the name XTX. That is in R. TX transposes the matrix. Then matrix matrix multiplication is written a bit funnily as percent star percent. And then we do X. That is the matrix in front of B. Let's do that. Then we see dim X, T, X. That's an 11 by 11 matrix. That's what we expected because P is 10 and it needs to be P plus one times P plus one. Good. And the right hand side, that is here X transpose Y. So we can do that all in one go. So solve the matrix X transpose X and the right hand side X transpose times Y. And let's just bring, the, bring up the help here. This function solves the equation A times X equals B for X 
and the matrix goes here and the right hand side goes there. So the matrix, I made this shorthand XTX and the right hand side is X transposed Y. So that is our system of linear equations and the answer is beta hat. So let's just draw that in a variable. Good, let's see what we got. Beta hat is this. And we can't really tell whether that makes any sense or not, but at least it has a correct size. So we have an intercept, which means everything starts with 12 plus or minus something. And then number of cylinders is multiplied with that. I forgot what this is, but it has coefficient 0 0.0133 and so on all the way down. So that's how we get the answer if we just do it by hand and just use matrix operations. Now, of course, that's not how you would actually do it. There is a built-in R command to do linear regressions, and that's called LM for linear model. That has a long head page, which you can read at some point, but here I'm just showing you how that's done. So we need to first remember what are our variables called. So they are MPG cylinders and so on. And that's what we want as a response. So I say we want to model MPG. And then there is a special notation using the squiggle sign, which you can use in R to describe that kind of models. And there is a special shortcut, namely dot means all variables except for the one on the left hand side. So that means we want to model MPG as a function of cylinders, disp, HP, DRAT, WT, QSEC, VS, AM, gear, and CARP. And we need to tell it where to find the data, and that is just empty cars. So that's really all we need, and then you get back a slightly complicated model object. So let's store that in a variable before we look at that. So first thing, if you just type M, then you get some, and we should compare that. That already shows us we did it right earlier. The intercept was 12.303, and here it's 12.303. The first coefficient for cylinders is minus 0 0.1114, and here is minus 0 0.1114, and that goes all the way, the last one, 0 0.1994 and 0 0.1994. So we get our coefficients back, and our way of doing it by hand was correct. Then I just want to show you there is the command summary, which to many objects gives you an actual summary, but for this LM object, that is a bit funny because the summary is much longer than what you get without the summary. So you get this. And that here has the coefficients again, but there is lots and lots and lots of other information in that display. And one of the main aims of the module is to teach you what all of these numbers mean. So for now, we have just understood the column estimate here. But by the end of the module, you should know what all the other numbers mean here, and these funny markers, of which there is here only one, and there are R squared values, which we will discuss. And there is a lot of information here, but it needs a bit of expert knowledge, I would say, to interpret and to know what it means. And that's one of the main aims of the course, to give you this knowledge. So for now, let's just note, we know how to compute the estimate column. And I think we have maybe a bit of sense of what it means. Good. Just as the very last thing, I want to do a few simple plots. So first one, the fitted values. So the fitted values are x times beta hat. So the model would say y is x times beta plus errors. And we don't have beta, but we have beta hat. And for the fitted values, we assume the errors are something we don't want. So we just leave them out and we think x times beta hat is the closest we can get to the truth. In particular, the errors we assume are random and we cannot predict them. That's the bit which is noise and not subject to analysis. So that's what I want to call y hat. And that's a vector of the same length as y. So let's just show these together, y and y hat. C bind again glues columns together into a matrix. So here, uh, y hat has no heading, but still, so first car y was 21, and our fitted value was 22.6 or 59, 21, 22, 22, 26, and so on. And the question is just do they, these values have anything to do with each other? And here's one of the lower ones I see. It's also the lower one here, so it doesn't look too bad. But 
what I want to do is I want to just do a plot of y against y hat a scatter plot and that looks not too bad. We would expect that these points should be close to the diagonal. And let me just plot the diagonal that has intercept zero and slope one like this. If we look at that, we see we are not doing too badly. So these points are really close to the diagonal. So that's one more piece of evidence that maybe we did that all correctly. Okay, and that's all I want to show you here now. And we'll see more R in following lectures and following videos. Good. So that concludes our R experiment. And that is also the end of section two. So I'll see you again in a few days when we discuss section three. Goodbye, everybody.